All right, let's do a really quick video on transpose, not gizmo. So I'm gonna take a cylinder 3D, drag it on my canvas, edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Hit W and then of course you can hit Y to go ahead and go out of gizmo mode and then you're in transpose mode. So transpose works by just tapping on your object and that's going to find the surface normal of your object and I'm gonna go ahead and make poly mesh 3D, okay I did. So for instance, I can tap here on the top of my object here and now you have uh, three circles here. You have uh, three orange outer circles and three inner circles here, two red and one white. If you grab, so if you hit W, that goes into move mode, E is scale, R is rotate, or you can just hit these buttons up here. And if you want to go back into sculpting, just hit draw and then I go back into my whatever brush I had selected. So if, if I'm in move mode and say I tap the top of my object here, um, if I grab any of these outer rings, that allows me to just move those rings around. Uh, for instance, if I uh, just tap on the top and then I grab this outer ring and then hold down shift, it'll snap to increments around my object here. And then if I hit W and I grab this outer ring here, that will actually anchor at this anchor point here. And then this top point here will move the object. So if I hold down shift, if I don't hold down shift, I can just skew it. If I hold down shift and pull this one, that's going to shoot it straight down. So think of this first point as kind of an anchor. So if I go to this bottom here, and that anchors that point, and then I hold down shift, that'll just force this across. Now you can see why the gizmo is a little bit easier to kind of understand, but it, you know, it's transpose functionality. So this outer ring does a, basically, instead of a move, think of it as doing a non-uniform scale. So for example, if I hit Y, and I do it like this, and I hold down Alt to touch the top of this thing, it's doing the same thing as a non-uniform scale, only I'm using move now to do that. Oh, another thing about the gizmo is you don't need, since you have move, scale, and rotate all in one thing, you don't need to go to move, scale, and rotate. These don't do anything. And actually, if you download from the ZBrush plugins, there's a gizmo swapper. So if you like having a separate move, scale, and rotate when you hit W, E, and R, and you want it to swap out your gizmo, you can have that functionality. So you can just download that. But anyway, I'm going to hit Y. And then again, this move mode, oops, hit W for move mode is non-uniform scale. Now if I grab this middle one here and hold down shift, that's going to actually move the whole object. And if I grab this outer one here, that's going to kind of do a run a clipping operation. So it's kind of weird. So you get, I mean, it's if you're an old school ZBrush user, it's easy to get used to. Uh, but if you're new to ZBrush or you've been using another 3D program, so it might be a little hard to follow. So again, just tap to set your surface normal. And if you have move held down, this is a non-uniform scale on the outer ring, on the inner ring, or the middle ring. That's just a whole, moves the whole object. And on this side, it's a clip. But you can hold that control and you can mask along the surface of your object. If we go to scale by hitting E and we tap the top of our object here, scale is one of those things in transpose where uh, if you take this outer ring, it's just going to do a uniform scale. If you take this middle ring, it's going to do like scale on two axes and then this bottom ring, honestly, I'm not even sure what that does. I really only hardly ever use anything other than the uniform scale when I'm doing scaling. If I want to do a non-uniform scale, I'm just going to tap on my object and then hit W just to do a non-uniform scale. So for scaling in particular, I'll just set my pivot point by just by tapping on my object and then I'm just going to do a uniform scale on the outer ring. Rotate, you can tap here. So if you can rotate from this outer ring, it's going to anchor on that point. Or if you grab this one, it's going to rotate in the Y axis or the long axis of the object. And then this one here is going to anchor at that point and kind of rotate around. So again, rotate's one of those one where what I'm probably going to do, instead of just tapping on an object and then rotating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch on my object and then I'm hold down shift to get a straight line. And then I'm going to, this is going to be my anchor point, And then I'm just going to rotate around this way. So I'll like set my anchor and then shift drag off. So I'm just tapping and dragging off. That's another thing about transpose. You can tap and drag and it'll stick to your object. So if you, if you hold down shift and snap to the side, you tap on your object and then hold down shift to drag straight off. Now you can just rotate this object in this uh, direction. So let's switch out to the star here. So again, hold down shift, like tap, hold down shift to drag it straight out. And then you can just rotate along that axis by grabbing this outer ring right here. This inner ring here, I'll rotate along the long axis. And then this one here, I'm not even sure what that does, but those are the rotates, scales, and moves. Uh, if we grab a body real quick, let's go ahead and grab the demo soldier. Go into sub tool, I'm gonna hold down shift and turn off the eyeball with his body selected, so he just has his body. And now, again, with W, 
uh, selected but not the gizmo. I can hold down control and I can mask down my object. I can also do that across X symmetry with transpose. And the cool thing about transpose is you can just tap on your object and again it'll stick to your object here so you can kind of treat them like bones. And you can also grab these outer rings if you want to move the entire pivot inwards. So now when I go to rotate, since that's my anchor point, I can just rotate around that pivot. Or I can scale uniformly from that pivot and I can turn on the local symmetry. So I'm scaling along the local symmetry here. Or I can hit W and I can move non-uniformly scale down here. Or if I want to actually do a move, I can grab this middle ring and then I can just move along there. Uh, these little R, G, and B things that stick out, if you ever want to, let's go back to our cylinder here. Let's say I tap the, let's go cylinder, make poly mesh 30. Let's say I tap the top of this object. Uh, that's not giving me a, a very good plane. There you go, so I tap the top of this object here, and then I want to switch directions. I can just hit these X, Y, or Z rotations, and then I go ahead and switch uh, that. There we go, so we can hit X, and I'll go around down that X axis here. Uh, if you hover over the end of this thing, you can click to um, go to the center of your object and reposition. So if you hover over this white, you're going to see transpose line, click to reposition, and then shift to realign. And then another cool thing about this is, and we go over this in a later video, but I'll go ahead and talk about it now. So we grab a cube 3D, go into edit mode. Let's make a poly mesh 3D. Let's go ahead and scale this in just by using W and holding down shift to do a non-uniform scale. We'll go in here to geometry, dynamesh. We'll just dynamesh this thing. Now let's say I'm using my standard brush here and I want to go through here and I want to do a straight line. So if I hold down shift with my lazy mouse on, it'll put out a little green or a little red line and I can shift and drag. However, if you go into stroke and turn off lazy mouse or you tap the L key, you can hold down shift and just draw in 45 degree angles or up and down left and right. So if you like that functionality, which I actually do, I'll turn off lazy mouse, but let's say you want to draw a line that's not 45 straight or up and down. You want to draw it like perfectly like in this angle right here. So what you can do is you can set that angle, hold down control and tap this white circle and that's going to move your camera so that now this transpose line is straight to your camera. So hit Q to go back into draw mode and now you can hold down shift and just drag. So now if you want to do a line that goes exactly this way, you can hold that control and tap and then you'll go exactly that way. So that's a little bit of useful functionality with transpose. Um, transpose modeling we'll get to later. Transpose smart mask we'll get to later, but that is transpose line basics.